There are two kinds of hoofs. One that grows hoof wall straight up from the sole. It's very rare. You almost never see it. This foot in this slide, you can see the wall is just pure height. Doesn't grow out away from the sole. There's no quote unquote ditch or apparent separation or a gap between the sole and the wall. This is a beautiful foot. Um, you won't see it very often where the wall grows straight up. It's not, I would say, not an average foot. This is a much more normal hoof where the wall is growing out away from the sole, not straight up. So basically, you really don't have any wall height, just a tiny bit of wall height, but you do have width or length. It's a length away from the sole. This is what you see 99% of the time, a wall growing away from the sole. People think of the space between the wall and the sole as separation, but it is not. In this image, it is wall. Think of the sole as the tip of your finger, and the black arrows show what is the length of your fingernail from the skin of your finger. The area shown by the red arrows is the thickness of your fingernail. If you were to run your fingernail across the sole to the area designated by the black arrows, it would hit and it would be stuck because it is wall. It is not separation. Separation is a, is a definite hole between the wall and the sole. And on this foot, there is no gap between the wall and the sole. Can you see the difference between wall on the left and separation on the right? The foot on the left has no hole. It is just wall growing away from the sole, like your own fingernail. The foot on the right has an actual hole between the wall and the sole, into which you could stick a hoof pick or your finger or whatever. It's, there is no connection between the white line and the wall when there is separation. So there's a big difference. People think that if they see a ditch, you know, oh, it's separation. No, it's not separation. 99% of the time, it's just wall. When we bevel, we should always go to the white line. No wall should be left above the sole other than in the heel area. The bevel should be just a nice gradual slant and it will look flat from this angle. The bevel should not thin the wall or back the toe. You can see that the outer wall is visible. Though this is a different foot, the bevel is the same, all the way to the white line, but not into it, and outward at an angle of 20 to 30 degrees. The black arrows point to the inner wall on the right and the outer wall to the left. They should both be clearly visible and they should not be thinned. You should see both the inner wall and the outer wall after your bevel. The correct trim does make a difference. All trims are not created equal and all trims will not help the horse. This foot has been over trimmed at the heels and the toe has been allowed to grow forward. You can see the separation between the lamina and the hoof wall as the toe got too far forward to maintain the connection. The black arrows point to where there is separation and you can see the pulled blood at the tip of the coffin bone. The frog is almost non-existent. The black arrows show how thin it is and that a digital cushion is not strong enough to support the back of the coffin bone which has fallen down. Here is a healthy foot. What a difference. This is what all feet should look like. So take a good look. See the tight connection between the coffin bone and the lamina and the hoof wall. There's no extra space. There's no tearing. It's all even. It's not flared. The frog is extremely thick and healthy. And the digital cushion is holding up the back of the coffin bone as it should. Here are the results of an HGM trim on one horse that I followed for several months. In March, he had shoes on and I took those shoes off 
In April, you can see he's already grown out but most of the nail holes. In May, there's a difference in the angle of the new growth. Here are the last two months, July and August, and you can see a big difference. During March, April, and May, the inside of the foot was healing. But once it was healed, a new tighter hoof grew in. Totally elapsed time, five months. Never forget, the inside may be severely damaged and it must heal before it can grow the hoof nature intended. From left to right, we have inflamed lamina, bruised sole, and damage to the tendon and other in the bone and other internal structures from toe first landings. So all of those may be going on inside your horse's foot. And cutting off wall is not going to help them heal. You want to keep the horse sound so the horse will land heel first if possible. And all those bruised areas and torn lamina and swollen lamina and worn tendons need time to heal. The more internal damage there is, obviously, the longer the healing will take. But it never takes as long as people think. If we don't over trim the foot, the foot is really fast about healing and growing in a new foot. Here is an example of a correct bevel on the left and an incorrect bevel on the right. You can see on the left that the bevel is very smooth. There's no step. There's no ditch. If you were to run your finger down the sole, it would just be down the sole and then very nicely down that slant. The incorrect bevel is on the right and it's much too steep, not a gradual slope. And it's really left the edge of the toe at the very tip. The sole is pretty exposed and we don't want that. Here are two more examples of beveling. On the left is a correct bevel. On the right, an incorrect bevel. On the left, the angle is shallow. There's no ditch and no step. If you ran your finger down the sole and then down the slant, it would be a very smooth journey. It's wide. We do not thin the wall. We just slant it. The slanting alone is all it takes to move break over back. If we thin that wall, we're actually exposing it to damage because it's very close to the lamina. On the right, we have a very steep bevel. It's almost 90 degrees and it leaves the sole alone with a step. There is no slope. It's just a step and then down to a ledge. Um, so that's not what we want at all. Here is an example of a sole with a ridge and a sole with no ridge. No ridge is fine. The sole should not actually have a ridge. When there's a ridge present, it, the foot is telling you that it's, the hoof wall is too big. It's too far forward or it's too far out to the side. The ridge shows where the foot would like the hoof wall to be. So we need to respect that. The ridge is saying that your foot is out of alignment somehow. Whereas when there's no ridge, when the foot has gone back to its normal shape and is where it wants to be, there will not be a ridge. Also, um, some feet will not have a ridge, but they're just so far forward and the heels have been so trimmed that they cannot form a ridge. Trimming of the heels really prevents the foot from fixing itself enough to even show a ridge. So there's ridges that are good, ridges that are not there because it's bad, and ridges that are not there because the foot is actually where it wants to be. This is a very distorted hoof. This horse foundered quite a while ago. The sole very clearly indicated where to bevel, and because it is a founder case, the bevel is at 45 degrees to relieve toe pressure. If we don't relieve that toe pressure, the old growth will keep pulling the new growth out away from where it should be. The black arrows point to the ridge the foot has created, which tells the trimmer to what point the toe can safely be beveled. This is the same foot after that trim. The bevel is susceptible from this angle. It looks flat. The full bevel will be seen following this slide. The bevel goes only to where the ridge was. This is the final trim and you can see the heels and bars were not touched. This is the same foot after being trimmed. The photo on the right shows the final trim. The foot looks very different 
but the only trimming was addressing the toe. The foot was only beveled, the heels were not touched. As the before and after shots show, just the act of relieving the pressure caused by the forward toe has caused the hoof rings to diminish. That is how fast the hoof can change when we respect what it has to say. Here are the basic steps in the HGM trim. Clean the sole really well, especially the edge of the sole where it meets the wall and the seats of corn. Exfoliate gently any dead and crumbling sole and remove any bits of frog that may be blocking the central sulcus. Trim the bars only if they are thin and brittle or soft and punky or are above the hoof wall. Do not trim them any lower than sole level. They should always be a tiny bit above the sole. Horses need bars. They should not be removed. Three, if the heels are more than a quarter inch above the sole, they can be taken down to one quarter inch above the sole. If they are lower than a quarter inch above the sole, the higher one can be brought down to the same height above the sole as the lower one. Never trim by looking at the heels from the back. Number four, bevel the hoof wall to the white line from heel quarter to heel quarter if there is no ridge or to just in front of the ridge where there is a ridge. Blend up to the heels through the heel quarters. Note, a flat area in front of concavity is the same as a ridge. I hope this presentation helps you and happy trimming.